Hello friends. Uh, welcome to your daily forecast with Brett Janae. We are full mooning today. And I don't I don't mean like there's a full moon tonight. I mean like like the full moon uh, just happened at well a couple hours ago. 1054 was when our full moon happened. And um, so happy full, fullest of moons to you. If you're feeling it in your job or in your family right now, it makes sense. Um, the energy of the full moon is very yang. It's masculine and our emotions are very open and out there for everyone to see during the full moon. And so it can be really difficult and it can cause people to, um, you know, do crazy things and go a little loony. That's loony, lunar, moon, going loony. Um, so, uh, happy full moon. Um, we... Well, I actually, actually, we'll back up just a little bit. So I just took a couple of minutes and looked in my Moonology book because in the Moonology book, it has a very good um, description of the full moon and the time surrounding the full moon and the spiritual um, changes and... Um, I would guess like uh, frequencies that we get in touch with around the full moon. And I wanted to remind myself of what um, Yasmin said about it because she is, you know, but she is one of the people that got me started on the moon, about the moon. And if you guys don't remember, I wanted to show it to you one more time. This moonology book is absolutely winning. So just a shorty. If you want to know more, buy it. Um, but one of the things that I forgot about the full moon was, and I remember the gratitude part, um, because, you know, we're told a lot to practice gratitude and, you know, we have, we, you can buy journals to practice gratitude. You, uh, there, uh, there are just a myriad of ways that we're told that we can meditate on gratitude. You know, we tell people, thank you. We, we write people, thank you notes and things. Um, and I, but I forgot the other half and it is, she says that around the full moon, um, gratitude is only half of the whole. The reason why we practice gratitude around the full moon is because we need to choose to release not only toxic things from our life around the full moon, it's a great time to do that. But also, we need to release our feelings about harmful things that have happened to us. And we call that forgiveness. And I don't like that word. I don't. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I really, forgiveness gives me, like, makes my stomach kind of turn. Because the context I learned forgiveness in when I was a child was, um part of religion and also a punishment. So um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that. But um, I will say that uh, in learning to release my feelings about the things that people have done to me, um, I have come to see gratitude more and more deeply. And it is because we are full up a lot of the time. There's a lot going on in our minds and our hearts and the energies that are, you know, rolling through our body and, and we shine so brightly and, you know, we feel so dim sometimes. And it really is because we're so full that, it's just everything is all mushed up together and it really takes releasing things to allow for the room to be grateful 
And so that's why it's half of a whole. That's why um, what we do today is we spend a couple of minutes and she suggests writing down, actually writing down the names of people or, you know, things that have hurt you over the past month and exactly what they did and exactly the way that it made you feel. And then you go through them one by one and you, you can meditate on them. You can, you know, picture the person standing in front of you and picture you, you and, um, like picture you guys together in, uh, having a proper relationship that is, you know, back and forth and feels really good. Um, she suggests with the color pink to imagine like your, your interaction being, um, showered with the color pink because pink is a love color to us. Um, and it's a very soft color. And so um, she suggests meditating in that way um, and then moving on to the next person or the next thing. But basically resolving in your mind, visualizing the resolution of the issues that you've had with people and things over the past month. And then she um, um, tells us to burn the list if it's safe for you to do so, <laughs> like over a sink or outside <laughs> or something in a fireplace. That's a fireplace. I don't know, but she does. So she, um, she suggests doing that and then, but, but not just one, not just that one, because that creates a vacuum when we release things. Um, there's, there's a space there and we're used to being so full up that, what happens is our bodies and our minds and our spirit decides that it's going to fill that with all of the things around us if we don't fill it with something intentional. And so we choose gratitude and then, and so then we decide to, um, write down the things that we're grateful for. And that makes room and it gives us a thoughtful way to be able to experience gratitude. So that is our, our, um, our process for today on the full moon, if that's what you choose. Um, if that is too much, I think even just, you can do it mentally without writing it down. If you don't want to do burning lists and things, you can, even if it's just a moment today, um, when some, if someone even does something just today, you know, close down your eyes for just a moment when they do that and say, I forgive you for hurting me and then go on. And then, you know, maybe write in your gratitude journal or allow yourself even just after that moment to counteract the harmful feelings and the, like what people feel like, like the judgment counteract that with light, something that is bright and shiny and beautiful in your life. Allow yourself to feel grateful in that moment for our baskets that are so full. So, um, we are officially in the third quarter. Um, when the full moon happened, we moved into the third quarter. And so, um, you know, this is our first third quarter together. Uh, the moon, as of, you know, right just after 10.54 a.m. this morning, began its waning phase. So we will see less and less of it. This evening, the moon will look very big. And um, we are now moving in the direction of the new moon. Um, the full moon is actually a, a very good time for those new moon wishes that we made a couple of weeks ago. Chances are around the energy of the full moon, something will manifest itself or you will receive a promise or something that, that shows you that your new moon wishes are coming true. Um, another thing that we can do at the full moon is decide that one of our new moon wishes wasn't something that we wanted and we can release that. 
along like as a forgiveness to ourself, you know, um, you, I, you know, I release my, my ties to this idea in my life. And, um, then we can be grateful for the rest of the things that we wish for and for the, um, the promises of the wishes yet to come. And we know that in two weeks we can make new moon wishes. So as long as we fill up the void of having released something with something positive, we'll be better off. But we have to be intentional in order to do that. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to, talk like just even very briefly about is that as of right now, I mean, mostly the light that we feel right now is the sun, but the moon is shining brightly too. And the moon's light is said to have cleansing properties. And so that is good for us. It's also good for specifically our jewelry. So like our necklaces and earrings and things like that. Um, my bowl of stones tarot cards or oracle cards last month i i um i cleansed my my moon cards that you see right behind me here and all you have to do to do that is and it could be right now but it could be later tonight and i know it's cloudy but even just a little bit of those those moon rays or those moon beams as we call them are have a cleansing effect and so if you find a place in your house one of the windows or something that allows the moon to shine in, you put those things on your windowsill or even outside. Some people go for as far as to put their things outside and they will, they will um, be cleansed of any negativity and gain the moon's powerful light. And that's a really, that's a really cool thing for me. I really like doing that. And I hope that, I hope that the moon beams will be, um, nice and bright tonight but either way I will probably do I will probably do my jewelry this month last month I did my oracle cards when I um do herbs in my herb garden like last year I will take a pitcher of water and put it outside the night of the full moon and it actually works on liquids as well and so some people do that with their drinking water I just did it as sort of a an energy um, to give my herbs a boost of energy so that, um, the food that I made with my herbs would have that sort of, um, that would have moonbeam water, you know, would be grown with moonbeam water. And I, I just, that is just, that was just a super fun thing that I, that I really found, um, oh, just sweet. It made me feel soulful. It made me connect to my moon and my soul. So if that is the same for you, then totally do that. And it doesn't have to be one of the things that I said. It could be your favorite shirt. I mean, it could be your car. You could just park your car. I mean, if your car is parked outside, it gets it. But like if you normally park in a garage, if you want your car parked outside tonight, um, here it's actually raining. So just, you know, you, you're, you'd have to deal with water spots, <laughs> but, but like anything that you want to have that, um, cleansing effect, you know, let it, let it, let it, let it be touched by a moonbeam tonight and, um, it will bless you in that way, your material objects. So, um, Oh, let's see. There were quite a few things, quite a few little changes in the last couple of days. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Pisces because the sun, so our 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 monthly zodiac sign, moved yesterday at 604 um, into or from uh, Aquarius into Pisces. And so we move from Aquarius, that is a, a fixed air sign into Pisces which is a water sign and it's mutable and I didn't know exactly what mutable meant um, but it's a change it's it's all about a change in the wind or a change in the water as this as the, in the case of this sign um,
I wanted to say a quick sentence about the difference between sun signs and moon signs because we both have sun signs and or we all have sun signs and we all have moon signs. The importance of the sun being in Pisces is that Pis or that the sun, our sun sign, is the sign that affects our personality and our moon sign is our emotional makeup. Okay? So if we are in your sun sign now, we're in Pisces, then the things that I describe to you will be very natural to you in a, in, in a personality sort of way. Like the sun, your sun sign is, is what shines from you. It's what people see. Um, and it's, it's easy for people to see it. Um, your moon sign is what is going on on the inside. And not everybody can see it. The people who are closest to you a lot of times can. But it's the way that we deal and react to the things around us in our life. So, like I said, if your sun sign is in Pisces, the things I tell you may be like, you know, a bedtime story. And it just feels so good to hear those things. Um, and when we get to the moon sign, um, if you are uh, a Virgo, because the moon has moved into Virgo, <laughs> then you may feel a bit exposed. <laughs> but um, because because that's your emo that will be your emotional makeup, and you may be like, oh, you are describing me. Although we all have little bits and pieces of all the things. So yes, the sun is in Pisces. Pisces is a fish, and um, Pisces is also the very last. Um, zodiac sign in the wheel. We talked about Aries yesterday being the beginning of all beginnings. The In the wheel of the zodiac year, Pisces happens just before Aries, and Pisces is the sign of the ends. And much like the tarot death card, and we haven't talked a lot about tarot, I'm not great at tarot. I have a couple of divas in my life who are very good at tarot and learning tarot. And you may meet them at one point or another. But I have read little bits and pieces. And one of the things that came became very apparent to me is um, that some of the cards make you feel like when you see them in a deck that you, you know, buy or are gifted, you go, oh, gosh, I hope nobody ever pulls that card, including the death card. And the death card is actually not a card of death. It's a card of regeneration. And it's a card of looking towards something that will be changed into something new, very much like a phoenix. And so when we talk about Pisces and we talk about being the sign of ends, that's the kind of energy that we're talking about. Um, we're talking about an energy that is an end pointing to a hopeful beginning. And so we may feel that like the end of the year times, almost like coming up on the new year. You may have feelings like that. And that is your Pisces. That is that, that is that Pisces energy. And we'll be in Pisces for a month. Um, so that will be, you know, that will be very, that will be very, um, that will be very real to you. But Pisces likes to change and it loves the unexpected. And so unexpected things may happen to us this month. Um, and depending on your, your sun sign or especially your moon sign, we may react to that in different ways. But know that that is the, that is the energy of the month is that maybe unexpected things will happen. And um, we can see those as possibly as endings going into new beginnings. Um, we can see ourselves kind of rising out of that and coming up on Aries next month. So when we are at the beginning of new beginnings, but always know when there's an end, there's a beginning. Um, I rather like that philosophy and, um, I hope you do too. Um, I think uh, Pisces is creative and imaginative. It's compassionate and kind. Pisces is also 
um, easily demoralized because it is so sensitive. And, um, but it's intuitive, super, super intuitive. And so out of all the Pisces things this month, tap into that. Tap into listening to yourself because Pisces will help you. So let's do that. Sun is in Pisces. The end. Um, the moon, as of like 9.54 this morning, moved into Virgo. And so this is the one that's lasting a couple of days. This is where our emotions are. And this is where we would clash if there was one. So um, Virgo is very earthy and feminine. It is, um, it is practical and analytical and um, it, it works hard. And so you may feel nose to the grindstone for the next couple of days. You may also feel a, a little bit of a heat in your critical nature. And by that, I mean it might, act, it might activate a little bit. Virgo is pretty critical. Um, it, it worries. And a lot of us, when we get critical and we get all worrisome, we tend to overcompensate by either controlling the situation or, you know, giving up. Depending on which buttons it pushes. So just know that those buttons might be pushed in the next couple of days. But also know that Virgo is very good at balance. It's super loyal and it's great at getting stuff done. So if you feel a bit like everything is happening too fast in the next couple of days, know that that is your, that's your, that's your worrier. If you start to get critical of yourself over the next couple of days, that's your Virgo. And also know that if you're tapping into that energy, you can tap into all the good things. So tell yourself that ain't nothing to be worried about. Every little thing is going to be all right. Listen to a little Bob Marley, maybe. Um, and allow yourself to slide from the extremes of Virgo into the positive parts of Virgo, which are when everything's happening pretty fast, biting it off and getting it done. Virgos can do that really, really well. So allow yourself to feel that. Okay. Um, and connect to the earth. We, I talk about connecting to the earth a lot. I'm sorry, you guys, but just, I, it, it really, it will help you get through <laughs> any emotion in any sign. Connecting to the moon and the elements around you and connecting to your true center, that, that in itself helps you get through anything. So I do use that a lot. I know I use it a lot, um, but, but it's real. It's real, people. Um, the color for today is white. And we've talked about white quite a bit. Um, so that is purity and protection. Um, what I would do with that today is to get out your white candle and sit down with a... Um, a cup of tea and um, I actually looked up the teas the teas and the oils that go with the color white in in purity protection and also there's like a spiritual a progression or something that is also very white and so um, Chamomile. Most people have chamomile in their cupboard. If you don't, get some. It soothes your belly. It relaxes you. Helps you sleep. It's good stuff. Cup of chamomile tea. Cup of red rooibos. That's got some cinnamon or vanilla in it. Do that. Um, or something with anise. That's that um, black licorice flavor. That's a pretty, like, some people really like it and some people really don't. Um, but the people who do, it's pretty good. So anything with anise in it. 
sit down with your cup of tea next to your white candle. Know that you are protected from all the negative feelings and all the negative thoughts. Write your forgiveness list. Release some junk. And then write your forgiveness or your, your, uh, sound like a broken record. Write your gratitude list. And the way that I like to do a gratitude list is instead of writing, I am thankful for, although you can do that and it's very effective. Um, I would say, let's see, I love that wearing gray when it's raining outside makes me feel cozy and protected. And then in my handwriting underneath, I write, thank you. And then I would write the next thing. I love that in the morning when I wake up, my dogs are just waiting in their little bed for me to lift up my covers just a little bit so they can come in for a snuggle before I get out of bed. And then I write, thank you. And so that's the way that I like doing my gratitude lists more as like a list of things that I love and then and then thanking, you know, myself for thinking of it and the cosmos for bringing it to me, the universe for allowing me to live the life that I do. Um, and so that, it, but I actually physically, that's, I've actually physically write out that. In the same way, while I'm writing, sometimes I will remember that I have been hurt, but I don't push that away. I actually write that down. So I will write down, I really pushed myself in yoga this morning and I wasn't as relaxed when I left as I really wanted to be. And I'll write, thank you. And so... I think being thankful for all the things that we're willing to like fess up to all the things that um, all of the thoughts that come to our minds, even if we're not willing to give into them, we're willing to see them. That makes me feel really accepted. And so that, that for me is a great way to do my gratitude list. And if I find out while I'm doing my gratitudes, that there's somebody that like keeps or something that keeps popping up that really hurts me um, or really causes like an emotional, re an emotional reaction, then I can choose to release that. And today is a great day for that. So white candle, tea, little pad of paper. Um, release some things. Think some love to some people that maybe you know, are really hard to think love to, write some thank yous to yourself and maybe to other people too. Put your jewelry outside or something that you want moon moonbeam magic on. And, um, oh, patchouli or sandalwood. If you got some oils laying around, pick one of those. Those are good. Sandalwood is really good. I like that a lot. It's very woody and it and it smell it smells not like a sprucey sort of forest. Um it's a little bit more musky, but it's um it's it's very it's very good. So, um once again, you guys, thank you for watching my video. Happy full moon. I I really um I wish the best to you and, you know, moonbeams. Um my hope for us today is that we can get through today um, and when we feel the anxiety and the high energy of the full moon and, and or, or we get downtrodden that we remember that we have come from a long line of men and women and um, that we are connected to and we are surrounded by people that we are connected to because we're all we're all walking the same walk even though they're all even though, though all the walks are different um the, the two truths that can be true at the same time and i hope for us that we can just 
connect to that and to know that the strength and the energy and the love that we have is never ending and it doesn't deplete and it doesn't go away. It's always, always here. So that's what I hope for us today. And um, happy day to you. Uh, get at me if you have any questions. I love you guys and I'll see you next time.